No, let's get into the meat of this discussion. We're going to go around each of our speakers and uh, just reflect on some of the the, ro the role of ICT in socioeconomic development, uh, the areas where the postal sector could perhaps get involved, and maybe some, we might hear some examples from the various regions uh, where posts are getting involved in providing digital services or helping people get connected, things like that. Uh, Paul at the UPU. We might start with you. So, Paul, would you uh, kick things off, please? Yeah, thanks, Sam. Uh, and uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to begin this, uh, this webinar. Um, well, it's such an interesting topic that's relevant for uh, our industry, and that is digital transformation. Um, digital transformation is now uh, a key part of the development of all industries. And uh, the postal industry is no different. Uh, and uh, with uh, the current um, COVID pandemic that uh, unfortunately we're still dealing with uh, today, um, then we have seen that that has pushed uh, entrepreneurs, uh, governments, uh, important infrastructures like the postal infrastructure um, to embrace technology uh, and to undergo a digital transformation. Um, in the case of the, the postal sector, then it's responding really to the needs of the consumers. Um, we uh, were locked at home. Uh, we were unable to, um, to go to uh, offices. We were un unable to go shopping. And so we were looking for, as consumers, we were looking for an easy way to continue our lives. So we went online. Uh, and, uh, and that's a general trend across the world. Um, and that meant that businesses uh, should go online as well and service industry should go online. And so that's really driven this uh, dramatic change for the postal sector to move into providing online services, um, but still fulfill a very important role, which is the bridge between the physical services and the digital services. Um, and so it's not just about uh, technology. It's not just about uh, having access to online services, but many of us still uh, eat physical food. We wear physical clothes. We're dealing with uh, a lot of physical items in our lives. And the post uh, has been an important national infrastructure to provide this physical um, connection between people, between businesses and people. Uh, and that's the, the same today. So as well as this digital transformation, postal fulfilling still this physical connection. Um, and, and COVID has accelerated the need for this. Uh, in most countries, uh, the post has become an even more important national infrastructure, providing access to digital payment services, providing access to distribution of social welfare um, using digital services and also physical um, services as well. And so that this uh, COVID pandemic has really, uh, I, I guess, given a, a new impetus for the digital transformation of the post. However, uh, in um, small island developing states, uh, which is the focus of our discussion today, then there are some challenges uh, in this digital transformation. Um, SIDS tend to be confronted with some common constraints um, related to uh, access to resources, related to the, you know, the size of their markets uh, and the size of their economies. Uh, and a heavy dependence on um, you know, a small number of external markets. And unfortunately, during this COVID time, the, the, the markets were cut off. Um, and so that created a lot of challenges. Uh, but still, uh, we saw that in SIDS, um, and uh, even within some of the regions that we'll be talking about today, uh, in the Pacific uh, and the Caribbean, that posts have embraced technology. Um, to be able to continue to provide relevant services, government services, um, e-commerce services, uh, e-payment services um, that uh, continue to help uh, the economy of SIDS uh, continue to be relevant. So I think I might leave it there at the beginning and then we can come back later on to some other points. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Paul, and great comments there about uh the post as an enabler of communication. I mean, it's always been that way. And so how we can look forward? Well, let's not ruin the, the rest of the conversation by me getting carried away. We'll move to Rodney Taylor in the Caribbean. Rodney, would you like to share some comments, please? Sure. I mean, Paul said it really well. That was a really nice, comprehensive um, introduction to the topic there. Um, the only thing I would, I would 
I, I observed in terms of uh, his comments uh, about us still wearing physical clothes. I, I guess that's until we move into the metaverse, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and we're all avatars. But um, he framed the argument very nicely in terms of how the, the opportunities, very big opportunities for small island states to participate in global trade uh, using digital technology, um, but also the challenges of being small and being vulnerable, small markets, uh, sizes, and so on. Um, but we have to continue to drive this because if we don't, we're going to, uh, it's only going to get worse, certainly from a small island developing state, if we don't, uh, if you're not connected to the global economy through digital channels. Um, and if we don't provide opportunities, because the, part of the opportunities is around the creation of digital goods uh, and, and the selling of creative content, for example, the marketing and selling of creative content, opportunities to promote all that the um, countries have to offer, either by way of tourism or, um, or financial services or any such um, aspects of the economy. So this, this, that's where some of the opportunities are. And certainly from the postal perspective, uh, Paul is definitely spot on, as I would expect him to be. Uh, in the pandemic, we saw a move towards uh, greater delivery uh, of, of goods and services. Um, I would say I would even go back further in the early days of the internet when everyone thought that the internet was the death of, of postal services, uh, quite the opposite. In fact, people, uh, many post offices, because they're community-based, provided opportunities for things like internet cafes, uh, for those persons who did not have internet access or access to devices. And so to this day, they continue to provide support um, for things, online applications, which are complex, which may require a level, level of digital skills or digital literacy. Uh, post offices can facilitate those, postal services can facilitate those. Um, they certainly can act as service bureaus for, for government services so that it's a one-stop shop uh, access to all government services in one place, again, for those that are not connected. So there, there are many opportunities, uh, many challenges, and hopefully collectively, as we work together, uh, we can help those countries around the world. And happy to see the participation here today from across the world and our, our, our brothers and sisters from, from the Pacific Islands. And uh, we look forward to collaborating with you beyond this discussion today. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney. And uh, frankly, we might move to you now if you'd like to share some comments on ICT and the posts and the developments in your area. Thank you very much. Uh, well, as, as Paul and Rodney went a little bit more into the general terms, I always like to be disruptive. And, and uh, talking about ICT and uh, digitization in the, in the post world, uh, I will say, for all those postal organizations of uh, executive in this meeting, you will be out of business. Unless, unless our postal organization abandon their comfort zone and seek to develop in innovation models to support our organization to continue to provide the regulated services to the community, but also to enable development of our small island nation. I would like to underwrite that it is not a matter of choice, but if we do not take the needed step today towards digitization, then you, when you return home, you need to put the out of business sign forever. Although digital transition is mainly driven by technological savviness, it will only succeed and benefit the whole community if it simultaneously provides connectivity and access, as Rodney mentioned, and facilitates economic growth and development. But the good news is that uh, Rodney mentioned is also that the digitization has created a lot of, of opportunities for the potter sectors, which I would like to name a few as recommendations. Uh, for what we did in Curacao back then was when I was the Postmaster General. For the postal services to be able to compete effectively, they need to change drastically. They need to speed up digitization of their products urgently, otherwise they will be out of business. Uh, Rodney said they're still alive because everybody thought uh, the internet would be the end of the postal sector. Yes, still a lot of people 
like to communicate through poles because the connectivity is not that high in, in, in our sets. But in the near future, with more connectivity, if the postal sector uh, did not step up their game, they really will be out of business because the private sector will take over, the private operator will take over. So I, I, I urge the postal operators that they undergo a cultural change as well as rethinking technology. The postal sector should be managed commercially. I, I believe, especially in the region, I see that whenever there is discussion about uh, transition or, 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 or modernization, the political environment has a lot to say in the way the postal sector are managed. And I believe uh, the organization should should be self self uh, organize, organizing and 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 take their digital transition in their own hands. The teams should be more on top of the uh, the transition uh, and, and come up with with modern or digital products, but. To be able to do that, I, I think there is a role for UPU as well as, as maybe perhaps uh, ITU to organize a, a, a ministerial, a high level ministerial meeting to get those decision makers or policy makers engaged in this process. So uh, I believe I, I can say a lot of this, but because I've been on both sides of the aisle. I've been as a postmaster general, and now uh, since the last uh, six and a half year, uh, I'm the regulator. So there's a lot that can be done. And really, 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 I mean it, if they do not change the way uh, they manage uh, the postal sector, that specific postal organization will be out of business. I'll leave it to here, but I, I welcome any comments or question that might be exists to, to, to elaborate a little bit more on my vision and my thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Frank. We're going to come back for a general discussion after everybody's had their, their say and you've, you've peeled off, peeled the skin off a couple of wounds there, haven't you, <laughs> Frank? With things like um, how politicians might be involved in the digitalization. Anyway, we'll come back to that later on. We're going to head now to Samoa. Sarai, would you like to share some comments with us, please? Okay, thank you very much um, uh, for the opportunity. Yes, I would like to, to add more. I think I agree. I can say I, I agree with what some other speakers mentioned about the the role of ICT uh, play or role of technologies play in our fields nowadays, especially with economic development. Uh, in the education sector, it was a totally shift from the traditional with this pandemic, the, the global pandemic that everyone is affecting. It's a totally shift from the traditional way of teaching and learning into a modern and a digital transformation that gives us more, you know, introducing us to different models or platforms that we deliver and learn. I think I can uh, relate to Franklin's mention about the postal sector. If they don't change their mindset of how to make business and how to can continue, it will be the same. They were left out. It will be the same. Um, I can say it's the same avenue for education sector. If we don't change the mindset of our people that this is it, we need to go with it. We need to use the, to transform our way of thinking and our way of delivery using the technologies available. Then. We, we, we can cope with the world because it reduces the transaction cost. You know, it can, can connect and give more collaboration between the lecturers or the teachers and the students. It gives them more opportunities and closer to their students. That is from the academic and the education point of view. So it's a lot of, uh, we look at the positive way of how the technology play its important roles in developing of our economy in our seats. Uh, we are so far away from the world with these uh, geographical um, locations, but
but with the technology we have, it keeps, you know, it, we are connected like we are now. Different time zones, without this technology, we can't communicate and we can't share, we can't collaborate, we can't cooperate to, to solve something. So uh, I'll leave it there uh, for now, but I can add more and uh, interact with the others. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, and we'll move to Andrea now. Andrea, you've got some opening remarks and some slides to share with us. So I'll hand it over to you. Yes. Uh, thank you. Just. Uh, can you see the slide? Yes, yes we can. Yes. OK. Um, Yes, I mean just to echo uh, what uh, uh, Sarai was 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 saying before. I mean, this is a simple graph that shows how uh, Pacific Island countries and also Caribbean, you know, they are uh, uh, on average smaller than uh, on the on the x-axis you can see the population, and on the y-axis you can see the distance from uh, the main markets. And like uh, Sarai and other speakers were saying, I mean, you can clearly see that. Uh, uh, the Pacific, even more than the Caribbean, is on average, if you like, smaller and on average uh, more distant than anybody else from uh, the rest of the world. So uh, clearly uh, for the Pacific, any option that is able to, to reduce, uh, if you like, the tyranny of distance is something that uh, should be pursued in any area. It can be education, it can be... It can be uh, commerce, or it can be any other areas, uh, health as well. And so from, from a trade perspective, I mean, uh, the e-commerce e uh, is something that e-commerce, or, e or if you like uh, uh, the uh, application of ICT enabled channels to, to, to trade uh, is uh, something that allows business to, uh, to, to, to reach out uh, to their clients as well as to other businesses uh, acro across the globe in in an easier way, and uh, by doing so, uh, it can uh, obviously um, for for a business for any business it will be easier uh, to start and to operate, uh, and also um, and also obviously uh, if that's the case if that's the case that's the case uh, certainly in the goods sector but also in the services sector. Uh, if you think about some, for some services, I mean, uh, the tyranny of distance can be completely eliminated by the application of uh, ICT-enabled technology to commerce. And that's, if you like, the reason why uh, e-commerce was uh, included, as, as I was saying in the introduction, as a priority of our Pacific Aid for Trade strategy. And uh, uh, as part of uh, uh, the, the, the work of our organization, Pacific Island Forum Secretariat, uh, we started working on e-commerce back in, 2000, in 2017 uh, by undertaking diagnostic studies on the, uh, if you like, you know, on the determinants of uh, uh, an enabling environment for e-commerce. Uh, and one area of those uh, determin one, one area of the enabling environment for e-commerce is obviously uh, the, the area of trade logistics and trade facilitation. And this is why, uh, you know, the partnership uh, with uh, UPU and with the postal sector started to develop. Uh, at the Pacific Island Forum, uh, together with our partners, between 2017 and 2021, we developed around 11 uh, diagnostic studies on e-commerce, one for each of, almost each of our members, using a standard methodology uh, uh, developed by the UNCTAD. And uh, these uh, diagnostic studies then were consolidated uh, in a regional study that then eventually informed um, uh, the development of a Pacific e-commerce strategy and roadmap. Uh, these strategies include uh, 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 54 regional measures, and uh, it was approved back in, two, in August 2021 by our ministers. And now, after approval, the work that we are carrying on is focusing on implementation. And um, uh, the, 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 the role of the post if you like, is explicitly embedded in the strategy and the roadmap. Uh, and uh, within this area, obviously, the strategy and roadmap identifies uh, a number of priority actions 
uh, that we want to pursue a regional level uh, with the support of IPU and, and our partners. And we identified in the, in the strategy three main areas where uh, we think uh, that e-commerce can be uh, enabled by cooperation with the uh, postal uh, services. Uh, the, first, uh, the first area of cooperation was the, the, the deployment of uh, custom declaration systems. Uh, the second area of cooperation was, of course, like we have talked about the modernization of uh, the postal uh, operational processes. And the third area was the development, the adoption and development of addressing system, be it a physical system or a geolocation system. Now, with regard to the CDS, to the custom declaration system, our strategy uh, noted how this system allows for, uh, you know, the custom information coming along with the parcel. Uh, to be shared electronically uh, with the receiving post operator before the package is sent. And also the strategy notes how this system can be interfaced with the custom automation system that we have in the region, which is ASICUDA. Now, from this point of view, the adoption of uh, CDS in the Pacific Island Forum countries plus and the interfacing with ASICUDA can not only speed up the clearance of e-commerce parcels, but can also respond to the uh, legal requirements adopted in some countries that require uh, you know, uh, the delivery of advanced cargo information. Uh, this is a system that we are already, uh, uh, that we are already piloting in Vanuatu. And, uh, and uh, we hope that uh, uh, if the pilot is, is successful, this is something that can be replicated regionally uh, so as to enhance our e-commerce infrastructure. Of course, on, e in, on postal services, there is something we can talk uh, later on, uh, but uh, essentially our strategy recommends uh, and the establishment of a regional program, which can leverage the, uh, the, the tools uh, of the UPU, uh, uh, both on e-payments, operational readiness assessment, and strategic uh, e-commerce readiness assessment to improve uh, the ability to deliver effective and efficient e-commerce solution of postal operators. If you look at the data for the Pacific, for example, you see that uh, uh, I, I, I just look at the data from, 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 uh, from UPU and uh, compare do, with those from, you know, if you like, uh, a courier like DHL, that, uh, for example, in order to send uh, a package of half kilo between uh, the Pacific and Australia, uh, UPU is on average between 40, um, sorry, UPU, the postal service is on average 40% to 66% cheaper than the private sector. But then the problem is, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the speakers before were referring to, is not just the fact of being cheap, which is a very good starting point, but the, the system needs to be uh, fast, it needs to be reliable, it needs to be traceable, it's something that each consumer and business wants. So uh, in order to achieve these results, the development of a regional program is what our strategy recommends. And then finally, uh, you know, we are talking about small island, we are talking about places with uh, lots of rural areas that are without an addressing system. And obviously for a business or a consumer, or a consumer being located in this area is either difficult to buy uh, by using e-commerce or even to sell. So definitely the adoption of uh, a street addressing system, for example, as is being piloted currently in Samoa or alternative geolocation system using uh, you know, uh, alternative uh, software like uh, Google Plus Code or even uh, local software that are available in the Pacific is something that uh, should be, uh, should be uh, implemented in order to improve uh, e-commerce e readiness. Uh, that's, the, that's the reason why at the piece we are promoting the, uh, the development of this uh, regional program uh, with the UPU uh, based on uh, the example of what the UPU has already, is already uh, undertaking in the, in the African region. Uh, there the, the UPU is implementing a very interesting model which leverages not only their own technical expertise but also uh, partners for, from developed countries, in that case uh, France Post, to build capacity uh, in, uh, in a selected number of countries. In the Pacific Island uh, region we are fortunate to, to have amongst our members Australia and New Zealand, uh, Woods Post could uh, uh, potentially play a similar role to what France is, uh, is uh, uh, undertaking in Africa uh, we, within the, the context of this uh, UPU model. And a final, uh, other two areas of cooperation that we are pursuing uh, with UPU and with the postal system in general is their, how can I say, 
is there, I mean, the post cannot be seen in isolation from the rest of the e-commerce system. When I was saying at the beginning that we are undertaking uh, e-commerce assessment in the different areas of, uh, uh, po uh, of e-commerce readiness, obviously logistics is one of the many elements that make sure that e-commerce can work. And therefore it is important that the postal services be fully involved in the regional e-commerce governance system that we are currently developing in the Pacific, in this case, uh, through the participation in the regional and uh, committee and subcommittees uh, where all the actors of the of the e-commerce ecosystem uh, will be able to uh, to determine the direction of, of uh, uh, the e-commerce governance going forward. And finally, of course, the post uh, uh, RNA can be an important provider of statistics. Uh, because a lot of time uh, we talk about uh, what are the determinants and we have a lot of information on what can be the determinants, determinants of e-commerce, but unless we have information on what is the result of moving these determinants in order to generate e-commerce, then it's difficult to, under, to understand whether our policies are effective or not. And that's the reason why information from the postal system can, can be uh, very important to uh, understand the effectiveness and efficacy, efficacy of, our, of our policies for e-commerce. I think I'll stop here and then we can... Uh, uh, you know, I will be happy to answer any question uh, later on. Thank you. Well, thank you, Andrea. There's a lot to chew on in just those few slides that you've presented. Um, I, one of the other things which probably outside of the scope of our discussion today is even how can the bigger postal operators help? You mentioned that in that region, there's Australia and New Zealand. What would the role be of uh, larger countries? Would you call them yeah. more developed countries? Whatever the, whatever the phrase might be. Yeah. We might. Well, that's something for us to to, to mull over um, over the course of this uh, of this webinar. Now we got we have a poll that we're going to launch. So um, it's going to appear. Oh gosh, in the might even jump up on your screen when we launch it. So you can see the poll. And in your opinion, what are the main obstacles preventing the posts of SIDS from successfully digitalizing their activities? So, as I say, vote early, vote often. You can only vote once, I think. <laughs> um, but please select uh, the uh, options that you think are the main obstacles. And we're going to come back to that later on. So please do get voting. Um, as I said, we'll come back to the poll later on. And I know some of you have already um, popped a few questions in the Q&A. If you have any questions, please do pop it in the Q&A and we will get to them as we go along. Um, while we're people are voting and thinking up their questions, uh, Paul, I might just ask you a, a little bit of a leading question, which is really relating to, no, to technology. Technology has been the big theme that we're talking about today, and our panelists have mentioned about technology's role. So, what what are your immediate thoughts about how technology sort of overall can play a role in? something like the economic development of uh, of seeds? We've seen a little bit out of um, Andrea's presentation as well. Do you have some some comments just to start a conversation, please? Yeah, and thanks. Uh, and I think actually I want to follow on from um, some of the points that have already been brought up by some of our panelists in this regard, because you know, technology is um, an important facilitator of economic growth in a number of different ways. Um, and in terms of uh, the postal sector, then technology is really important to um, encourage the relevance of the post for government policies. Um, and uh, I think uh, it was mentioned by a couple of speakers about the importance of having um, convenient services, uh, of having secure and reliable and efficient services. And these days, technology is vital for that. Uh, economies will stall, uh, postal growth will stall um, if the, the relevance, uh, the reliability and the convenience of services is not addressed. Uh, and that goes for governments as well. So government services, there's been a big push uh, within uh, the UN for the digitalization of government services uh, for economic growth. So technology now is at the, the foundation of economic growth uh, in all countries. 
And what we have seen at the UPU is that where governments, uh, operators and regulators work together um, in the transformation, in the digital transformation and adoption of technology, that uh, diversify, diversified services lead to better performance of government departments, lead to better performance of postal operators. Uh, and around the world, that's the case where postal operators have used technology to diversify into financial services, into e-commerce services, uh, in, uh, as I think as Rodney mentioned, into community access um, points as well, where posts can not just provide access to technology, but can be a facilitator, uh, a capacity building resource to help people use technology appropriately. Um, technology is not the solution. Uh, connectivity is obviously very important and it is one of the challenges that, uh, that Rondi mentioned is still uh, to be addressed. Uh, there is still a significant proportion of the population that are uh, unconnected and so the connectivity issue is relevant but once people are connected then uh, there needs to be a lot of capacity building to help them um, become online businesses, become online consumers. Uh, and this is where the post can actually play a very important role just by leveraging the network that's available uh, in many countries. Now, in small island states, uh, that that's uh, not necessarily as large an issue as it is in um, some of the bigger countries. But like we see in um, many SIDS that uh, posts are providing, you know, for example, in French Polynesia, posts are providing um, access to administrative documents. Uh, online and uh, facilitating the physical distribution of those documents. Um, uh, in Tonga, there's a, a, an online postal shop. Um, so the post is facilitating access for small and medium enterprises to be able to, to sell online. Um, again, in French Polynesia, the public internet access points provide um, access for, for consumers uh, and for businesses to be able to go online. So these are like fundamental um, uh, services that can really bring value um, uh, and really support economic growth uh, because one of the challenges that SIDS face is uh, not just access to technology, but also resources. Um, uh, and people in digital transformation, it's well known that uh, digital transformation is about technology, but also about people uh, and about processes. And that's where uh, an institution like the Post uh, can play a very important role. But picking up on um, picking up upon the point made by Franklin, uh, that uh, there needs to really be a culture change, uh, and that culture change starts from the top. Uh, and it also starts from governments, uh, I think, um, uh, reflecting on the, uh, the, what may have appeared to be a tendency to relegate the postal sector uh, outside of development strategies when we're talking about digital transformation in the digital economy. Um, but we've seen, as I mentioned before, that uh, countries where the post has been embraced as part of the national strategy for governments, as part of the national policy for the development of the digital economy, that there has been a better performance by those countries and by those postal operators. So at the UPU, uh, we're really reinforcing uh, our efforts um, uh, in response to that um, to strengthen uh, the work that we put into uh, small island developing states and encouraging uh, greater awareness for governments and, and regulators to integrate post in national strategies. We have a, um, a program uh, on um, digital transformation and digitalization of postal services to support that. So we are providing assistance uh, to um, member countries. Uh, Andreas mentioned uh, a project that we've been running on digitalization in Africa. And this is actually working with the government, uh, the postal operators and the regulators and other stakeholders in the digital economy to unlock um, the power and value that the post can bring uh, in that area. So we've successfully um, executed that in 10 African countries. We are currently in discussions with uh, the PIFs uh, and some donors in the region as well, uh, including some of the large countries um, that you mentioned, uh, Ian, uh, to be partners in um, executing these digital uh, assessments 
on the capability of the postal sector, and then to make recommendations to governments, regulators and operators on steps that they can take in their digital transformation to accelerate um, the digital transformation and the value that the post can bring. Um, and uh, we've identified as part of these projects, um, you know, a number of actions that governments need to take um, uh, to integrate uh, posts more effectively so that there is complete inclusion of the economy in the development of uh, the digital um, services. Uh, Franklin, do you want to quickly add something? No, no, I just make a comment to a colleague. So. All right, I thought you were waiting. But, but, but no, <laughs> sorry for that. I will come to you in just a moment. Um, we've, we're going to close our poll and uh, see what the results are of the poll. So if the team at the UPU can close the poll, uh, we'll be able to see the results uh, and they display. You are probably seeing them on your screen right now. So what are the main obstacles? Limited funds comes out on top insufficient untrained human resources, lack of know-how, lack of equipment, interesting, uh, weak or unstable internet connection only ranks there as fifth. Internet coverage is a similar sort of thing. Perhaps if we add them together, we have a, a much bigger <laughs> proportion. So there we go. There's some interesting um, results there um, uh, from, from the poll. Um, oh, I wanted to, Sarai, I wanted to ask you a question about, because we are talking about digital inclusion. And one of the sort of we often talk about, you know, getting people on board and the role of uh, digital, you know, getting people become going maybe you may you can't maybe you can't become a digital native, but becoming familiar with the digital world and the pitfalls involved. What's been your perspective of getting people involved in the online world, um, and then perhaps being buying online or using digital services? in the palm of their hand or using digital services at the post office, things like that. Do you have any observations or comments there, please? Okay, thank you for the questions. Uh, yes, I agree with what you said and it's happening here in Samoa. The way that we buy in our people to get uh, used this dig digital transformation services from the education point of view, it's the awareness and making people to digitally um, literacy uh, excuse me, to be familiarized of what it's out there because we can't leave them. We, we, we don't want to leave anyone behind. So it's, uh, the problem is the lack of awareness and also the people that you access into this technology is the older age. But when it comes to education, it's the young people and they are dependent on their dependents to get the technology to them, to get the devices to them so that they're familiar and engage. So with this the digital transformation, uh, without the device, without the connectivity, which is the major issues, thanks Paul for, for mentioning that, thanks Frankie, they mentioned that too. It's here in the Pacific, our major issue is the connectivity, access and affordability. As shows in the poll, it's, um, it shows that um, what we, we, we have, you know, what we are experiencing. So what we, we, we bring into our community is the more awareness. And this more awareness, it has to come across the board, not only in the education sector or in the classroom or with this digital education, but going to the community where we have our families. Because uh, uh, with this technology that we are able to communicate and collaborate more with better economy for our, our regions. As I said, that. Um, the digitization, the digital transformation of any sectors, it all depends on the technology we have. So awareness, more awareness, um, people to become digital literate so that they understand with their data protection, their data privacy, with this cyber security, because it comes with those threats. So the technology, the people, the regulations, the awareness, those are the things that we need to work on and work together so that, you know, we, we're in a safer place. So, yeah, I think I, I'll, I'll talk more when you ask another question, but I think uh, I answer your question is the first part. Is that yeah. right? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's also always interesting to talk about a personal level as well. 
because obviously each of us knows how to use a computer. Everybody connects to this must have some idea how to use a computer. We have the issue of the digitally disadvantaged um, and making sure that as we as an industry transform to become, I don't want to say digital first, but certainly digitally enabled, that we are able to bridge that gap somehow, um, which is a real challenge for policymakers. Um, and Franklin, I, I had a, a question I wanted to put to you. Um, as you mentioned, you used to be the PMG. You've got uh, you're now in the regulator's seat and you must have a fair idea about the whole political scene as well. And one of the things Paul said was that diversified services can lead to better performance of governments. Um, I think you might have said commerce as well, Paul. But do you have any comments you'd like to share about that, about how um, you know, that, that digital transformation, especially in a, a SIDS environment, um, might lead to better access to services or better outcomes out of government and things like that? Uh, I believe, and, and I will combine it with one of those results of the polls, digital ICT or ICT tools, if you think about e-government, what are the government, what are the services of the government that can be digitized? And I believe the post can play a major role in there. Uh, to combine it with the, the, the highest score uh, issue uh, of the poll, which was lack of, lack of uh, uh, fund, sufficient fund, I might ask if that's really the issue the lack of funds, or is it the lack of having a financial plan? Because if you see all those opportunities that ICT brought to the post world, world well, they can use their, their, their uh, current infrastructure to, to I, I believe Rati mentioned it, a, a one-stop shop, or maybe it was Paul, uh, one-stop shop, out of the postal infrastructure by the postal organization has a lot of data. They can create a eGov tool because if the government itself of the administration doesn't have enough speed to implement a eGov system where all those, those government uh, services of public services can be provided through a single point of sale like one-stop shop with all the data that the postal organization possesses, it can start the process of digitizing the government products. So then it comes back to what I've mentioned that perhaps UPU together with uh, the CTU or uh, ITU can organize a, a high level ministerial meeting because most of the time when, when talking to, to, to politicians or, 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 or the policy makers, I feel that there is a lack of information by them what the postal organization can really mean to the community, how you can use it to in benefit of, 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 of the community. The, the postal sector, they knows all the cost customers, they, they, the last mile, nobody knows it better than them. So if you wanna uh, give a push to the economy, by using all the data, the expertise that, that, the, that the postal sector has, by converting the, the postal operators into uh, a really one-stop shop or shared service organization where all those other administrative organizations of the government can you can provide their services through a digital platform. It lower the cost. It, it, it can be more accessible to, 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 to the community. They have the last mile. It, it's a lot to mention, but 
I don't believe that lack of money is the issue here. I believe that, as I mentioned, if the postal sector undergo a cultural change, rethinking, rethinking uh, technology and create a sound financial plan, then the issue of lack of funds doesn't exist. And the government should give the postal organization more autonomy in raising their fund and, and, and creating the, because most of the time, whenever a, a, a postmaster general wants to pursue a, a, a avenue, then the political will is not there to give them the, the power or, or let, let them be self-organized to, to, to give that type of, uh, of, of, of benefit to the community. So, yes, I, I believe the postal sector can play a major role in that. And there's no lack of money. There's, there's no, well, what I was, I was going to suggest is that if you are a postmaster general or a postal leader and you want to reform the post, and you want to be able to embrace digitization or offer e-government services, you kind of need a willing partner in government by the sounds of it. Otherwise, you are working against the government. So, you know, go on. If I, if, if I may, uh, that's true. But what we did in 2010, 2011, we created a business plan. We didn't have any money, but we created a business plan and present it to the community, to the consumer and the government. And we move ahead with e-commerce. We was able to get some funds based on that business plan from the government. We invested in, in, in a platform. And as you said, uh, the postal sector can be, uh, can give the opportunity to the, to the uh, merchants to sell their products online. We created a, a platform called uh, Right to the Door. So all the local merchants could have uh, joined that platform with their pro products, sell their products through, through that uh, platform, and the post office would deliver because nowadays uh, the family, the mother and the father, both working. And when they leave office, they have to go to look after their children and they don't have time to go to, to stores, to, 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 to shop and those kind of stuff. They could shop online and the post office can deliver it at the time they, they require the product to be, to be there for them to receive it. So there's a lot of opportunity if you create a sound business plan, if you have the persuasive power to, to persuade the politician, the government, you will be able to, to raise the funds to, to, to make the post office really commercially managed instead of, uh, of, of, of uh, like a, a public service. So we, we've received... That, sorry, yes. go on, Franklin. Oh, we'll, no, no, it's good. We'll, we might move on a little bit we've received a question from the audience remember you can ask your own questions by clicking on the q a button and type in your question there and i will pose it to the our, our panel here the question is it's come from john uh Mwindo. i'm sorry john if i've mispronounced your name um how can the postal sector contribute to the achievement of sdg8 on the promotion of financial inclusion that's for anybody who'd like to jump in. How can the postal sector contribute to the achievement of SDG 8 on the promotion of financial inclusion? But anybody, Paul, you want to have a quick word? Yeah, let me uh, let me start off the, the discussion and uh, maybe other people can jump in. I think um, so financial inclusion is one of the key opportunities that posts, uh, postal services provide. Actually, the World Bank um, in their report state that remittances through postal channels are the cheapest amongst uh, remitt not remittance options. And so um, many posts uh, are actually very well positioned to help with the inclusion 
uh, of the community in financial services. And this is something that is a, a, a big push from the UPU. We have a, a, a complete financial inclusion and digital financial services program. Um, which is uh, investing in uh, digital financial services uh, in a number of countries around the world with the support from partners um, who are experts in the provision of financial services. And so posts have been shown uh, by the World Bank to actually be key facilitators of, of financial inclusion and achievement of the SDG. Um, eight goals and uh, it's something that the UPU has a very strong program on and we are encouraging this as part of this diversification of services that I mentioned before. Anybody else want to share a comment on that? So, yeah, I, I, I want to share a comment on that because uh, Paul, um, uh, Paul mentioned that UPU uh, is very much involved in, in, uh, in the finance services or, or money remittance services but up to lately, uh, I, I was a little bit confused why UPU was charging the postal organizations for being part of, I don't recall what the name is, of the money remittance services of the UPU. And my, my advice was that the UPU implement a pay-as-you-go concept, just like the other private operators do, like, uh, like um, MoneyGram, like Western Union do, instead of the postal sector to have to pay upfront for the uh, joining the program. And I'm happy to, to have learned lately that as of July, that's no longer the case, that, that UPU has abandoned that path and have the postal sector pay just the installation fee and implemented the pay as you go concept for the money remittance. Because as Paul mentioned, the, the postal organization is close to the community and there is where you can start, really, really start the financial inclusion. We have to move away from the outdated postal money order and just grab the the the, the modern money order system, money remittance system from the UPU, and it should be branded on the one brand and not that the, 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 the Latin America uh, and Caribbean use one, one name of the brand and, and UPU or Europe use another name for the brand. No, it should be marketed on the one brand, just like, like uh, um, uh, MoneyGram Western Union is all over the world on the one brand. So these are those, those things that I believe can create a much larger acceptance by the public and everybody knows that when you go to the post office is this channel and it's cheaper than all the other competitors so that's what i wanted to add to what uh paul mentioned on on the money the yeah frankly if i may just uh sorry sorry and just to extend that a little bit more i think uh, the future of uh, postal payment services is actually supporting um, the relevant transactions which are in the digital economy. So not just remittances. Uh, and uh, actually the, the future is uh, for e-commerce payment support. The future is for e-government payment support. And so that's the direction that the, the UPU is, uh, is going with, uh, with the facilitation of um, financial inclusion, because then that really brings real value uh, in all of the transactions that governments or consumers uh, really want to do. Uh, and it's one of the challenges for, for e-commerce as Andrea and his great work that's been done in the Pacific. Um, the payments infrastructure is a, is a key challenge and posts yeah. have a really interesting role to play in bringing these payment uh, delivery and online support services. And so, yeah, that's the, the direction that the UPU wants to take uh, this no. discussion in the future. Rod, that, Rodney, did you, that, uh, okay. sorry, Franklin, I might, I might just um, throw to Rodney because yeah. Rodney's um, very, very politely put his hand up. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> That's fine. Thank you. Um, and very good points again by Paul. Um, I'm aware of a project in, in, underway, in fact, in Barbados. I'm sure it may be duplicate, replicated elsewhere, but where um, kiosks are being installed in post office through a private uh, service provider. But um, and that those kiosks are to enable access to mobile wallets, for example, so you can onboard your cash if you don't have a bank account. So certainly that's, that will go a long way uh, in promoting financial inclusion. And post office, again, because of their 
the trust, the, the community uh, aspect of it then provides a perfect um, opportunity um, to provide that facility and also the training um, that is necessary. Um, and I'll just say one thing as well, um, is that the, I think Postal Sector needs to recognize that the brand, there is a brand in fact, uh, and, and the dot post um, top level domain that is that is being um, that is being managed by the UPU, I think is something that they can build on to engender or, or build further on that um, that concept of trust so that um, users are well aware that uh, it is a legitimate um, provider of postal services and and um, on the issue of cybersecurity that um, there is there can be a level of confidence as they use those postal services. So and, and certainly that is critical if you're talking about uh, financial inclusion and, and encouraging online payments and so on, people have to un understand or believe that they're operating in an environment of trust. Thank you. We might move on unless anybody else has anything else to add on this topic of financial inclusion. No. Oh. Well, Andrea, I know we've been letting you sit there listen to everybody i might um get you just to elaborate a little bit you mentioned three um three core points there with regards to uh, the role of posts or how they can help those customs declarations modernization of processes and addressing systems um just it, as we live in a very global world now what's the importance of those customs getting those custom systems right so facilitating the declarations getting small value items through um through customs and at the same time at the risk of sounding protectionist you know protecting borders and protecting local supplies can you just share a few comments on that and how that how this can play a role indeed in the economic development of small island states in, in particular in the pacific well uh yes th thank you I, I must say you know i'm not being a custom expert, uh, I can tell you what they tell me on this. And uh, what they tell me from the country where they're having this pilot is that basically, that you were referring to, everything that is going through e-commerce currently is very difficult to trace. And uh, from a custom point of view, this means uh, that uh, they are losing revenues. So that's, that's a key interest of customs, uh, especially in countries uh, uh, like some countries in the Pacific, where in, in some actually we don't have an income tax. And so we rely, most of our finance relies in, on import duties. So you can imagine in a world where, uh, uh, you know, e-commerce is ballooning, uh, one key interest of the custom services is to make sure that uh, what enters and what exit is subject to taxation. So that's the classic interest of customs. Uh, then uh, there is uh, another function of, uh, of custom. Uh, that can be undermined by the fact that, uh, uh, you know, e-commerce parcels are not well accounted for, which is the statistics. Uh, the customs are, in terms of trading goods, are the main provider of uh, statistical merchandise. And the more, uh, and as uh, the, the quantity of uh, uh, you know, small parcels imported and exported via electronic means increases that there is an interest of custom for statistical purposes to to track them so i think these uh, these are two uh, items and then the, there is the third one uh, that i suppose that um, it concerns more uh, kind of the area of trade facilitation uh, obviously uh, you cannot uh, treat uh, small parcels trade in the same way as you treat uh, you know um, you know big uh, Big containers, containers, yeah, shipping containers and so forth. And so there are, as I understand, there are good practices elaborated by organizations like uh, the WCO, uh, which allow simplified or expedited shipping of. So, so, so this, if you like, is uh, I think that that answers uh, the, 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 the question from a custom point of view. And then, of course, there is the issue of speed. And there is the issue of uh, uh, legislation around the world. Now, uh, the issue of speed is clearly uh, related to the ability of, you know, the post office in the receiving countries to have advanced information on the on the parcels coming from uh, uh, from uh, uh, the sending countries and being able to share this information with custom because that uh, it, it contributes to the speed up of clearance. And then finally. Uh, 
that I understand that in some developed country, but that Paul, I think, can elaborate much, much better than I can. In some developed countries, unless there is uh, uh, the, this advanced information that can be provided on uh, on uh, uh, the parcels that are uh, that are sent, uh, the, 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 there starts to be legislation in kind of US, you understand also China, uh, which may eventually prevent. Uh, countries to engage in e-commerce unless this advanced information is provided so uh, to, to avoid uh, fraud or illeg illegitimate trade and so forth. So there are a number of issues that link, if you like, custom post and e-commerce and, uh, uh, and that can be addressed by linking this, 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 uh, this three system for the benefit of revenues, trade facilitation, expediting, expediting clearance so efficiency and eventually complying with anti-fraud uh, or, uh, or illegitimate trade. Uh, these, these, are, these are some of, and, and as I say, I'm not an expert, so I tell you what they, they tell me <laughs> in this area, but this, if you like, is in a nutshell that, that, that justifies the importance of that uh, recommendation on CDS. Does anybody have any comments on this before we move on to a, like another question that's coming from our audience? No, if not, we'll move on. Yeah, Paul, do you want to quickly say something and then... Um, I and see then Sarai has yeah, uh, raised yeah. her hand. So oh, well, um, we should, We'll go to Samoa first. Yeah. So, Sarai, would you like to say something, please? I, I just want to add uh, what Andrew said uh, from the Samoa perspective in terms of uh, the postal. Um, recently, we they're installing the postal addressing system here in Samoa. They're starting, um, I think it was they started last year. And I'm sure Andre are aware because uh, we, we're dealing with this uh, e-commerce pathway and with the front of BIFs. So uh, we, we're moving towards it. So with these systems to be installed, a proper infrastructure should be installed first, you know, a proper assessment infrastructure with this digital transformation and infrastructure should be there for the system to work on. And yeah, we're, we're moving towards it. Postal addressing system is there and that's um, the things that limit the scope of e-commerce, but if we do it properly, then we'll improve the e-commerce as we speak of today. Thank you. Paul, did you want to quickly say something as well? Yeah, I just wanted to follow on from uh, from Andreas' excellent um, insights into the importance of uh, electronic data for, for border um, and customs clearance and just take another sort of angle to that. And it comes back to an angle that I think uh, either Rodney or Franklin mentioned before about, again, about the positioning um, the, the post in a relevant space for policymakers. And so the data that can be collected by going digital, then uh, you obviously improve the efficiency of processes as Andrea mentioned and improve the, the performance and speed, but you also gather incredible intelligence about what's happening. Uh, and so that data that's being collected um, can actually inform policymakers uh, on how to address uh, changes in structure, the changes in, in policy that can help uh, accelerate uh, the development and particularly for SIDS, because there's a leapfrog opportunity here with the use of technology. Uh, the great uh, advantage that SIDS have is that they don't have a lot of legacy systems to, to, to battle with compared to large economies. And so there could be the opportunity for access and use of uh, new technology um, and data that comes from this new tech technology to really inform some dramatic changes. Uh, and, uh, and at the UPU, uh, we are actually very keen on how to um, uh, expand the understanding of the knowledge that this data collection that Andrea is talking about can really help uh, identify trade flows, identify types of uh, goods that are being imported or exported, and that can help inform policymakers on what are demands, where are opportunities that, um, that can help economic growth. Um, and, and that's, uh, for us, a very interesting uh, new area of, uh, of ex uh, exploring uh, informed policymakers uh, based upon the data that's available within the postal network. Franklin, did you want to make a quick comment before we move on to our next topic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it, it's just a quick question. Um, comments on uh, the gathering of data. In Curacao, we have implemented in 2012 a cash option 
for the financial inclusion, you could have, you could gather a lot of information, how many people doesn't have a bank account to buy online. And by introducing the cash option, you gather a lot of information about that group of people and to try to find the solution, how to include them in the system. There, the data is very valuable on that side as well. That's the comment I wanted to add on that. And that's a great comment about financial inclusion because that's a crucial part of the entire e-commerce revolution. Um, and it's not something that's unique to SIDS. I mean, there are European nations where e-commerce's development was held back because people didn't have credit cards or didn't trust e-commerce. And that sort of leads nicely into one of the questions that come in, come in from the uh, audience. Uh, it's about the strategy or a logistics guide for startups and e-commerce innovators. So look, talking about the postal network and the telecommunications network as enablers of innovation and commerce, perhaps I'll throw, make it a very general thing. You know, do you have any tips for how posts can help startups or you know, in their own companies, whether it's an e-commerce startup or whatever, um, get started and and grow. I mean, would anybody like to? So, Franklin, you've still got your hand up. I don't know if that's yeah. Franklin. I, I, I believe we we mentioned the the postal sector to provide a platform for the startups to provide their services through that platform. So we created back then right to the door. So any any startup, any any merchant could have provide their services or their product through that port through that platform. So so postal organization is very well positioned to to do that and to help help those uh, startups with their promoting and selling their products and services. Any other comments, Paul? Yeah, I'd just like to extend that and, and say that we have seen um, a lot of success in a number of countries around the world where posts can be incubators uh, of startups uh, and, uh, and help uh, develop um, local solutions um, where there's great innovation that comes out of the, the new digital natives that Sarai was talking about before. Um, they can create uh, amazing, relevant local solutions for mobile applications, uh, for uh, payments, uh, for e-commerce, etc. But they lack access to a network to be able to get those applications in use. And that's where there's a beautiful partnership between the, the postal sector and, and startups. The posts have a, a network that reaches everybody in the country, uh, as has been mentioned. And it's actually part of a global network that reaches everybody in the world. We haven't really talked about a, a lot about that. Um, and startups have solutions that don't have access to networks. So bringing the post together with startups really does accelerate um, innovation. Uh, and we've seen that in a no number of countries around the world where some of the most exciting innovations now are coming out of Nairobi uh, and out of um, cafes in uh, Nigeria, um, uh, not out of what we traditionally think of where the, the big innovation comes from, from Silicon Valley or somewhere. And the, the, the beautiful thing about being part of an international network that is globally a single territory across the world is that these solutions can be um, utilised in a collaborative way so that we can uh, start to look at, uh, particularly for SIDS, this is a very interesting and relevant point, because we can look at uh, affordable access to platforms. Uh, secure platforms has been mentioned by, by Rodney, and I, I thank Rodney for, for pointing out the importance of the Dot Post project. The Dot Post project that the UPU uh, has been developing is looking at how to make access to shared platforms in partnership with startups, where startup solutions can actually be deployed across a collaborative platform for a region, for a group of countries where the affordability and uh, economic uh, sustainability of, of that solution can be uh, much stronger um, and can help SIDS actually leverage each other uh, to, to leapfrog as well, using um, the, the power of startups and the, the secure environment that Dot Post offers uh, as a shared platform service provider. Sarai, did you want to quickly add something? I think um, Paul mentioned it, but I, I, I'll, I'll add into it. Uh, with this opportunity with uh, startups, 
that working together with the existing ones as, as well as uh, using the postal services. Because we see it here, we're starting to it from some more perspective, this digital economy um, scenario that, um, you know, it gives an opportunities to the communication sector uh, for be innovative to create um, uh, local platforms or local apps for our local people to engage with, and also with the business sex, uh, business services sector. So with a lot of data host or hosted here in the postal uh, sector, they can share across with other sectors. So that gives them uh, more opportunities. And then this digital economy will come in. And thanks Rodney for mentioning the trust issue and that dot, um, he mentioned the, the dot post. Uh, it's being introduced here, but uh, the emphasis needs to go on further for more um, awareness of our people. So thanks for sharing that. Um, thank you. Rodney, since everybody seems to be lavishing praise upon you, do you want to add anything? <laughs> yes, Mike, there's a lot of love for you in the chat as well. Everybody says you're speaking sense. Do you want to um, add anything on any of these topics? I should probably quit while I'm ahead then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I, I really think that, um, I mean, there. I just wanted to touch quickly on, on, on um, the issue of lack of funding and based on my own experience again in Barbados, that um, really there were opportunities for completely new revenue streams uh, for the postal services, because in what I mentioned when we had our podcast in May was the, the specific uh, initiative in Barbados to deliver driver's licenses for um, in the pandemic because the offices uh, were closed. And um, for some people that meant uh, if they're not able to get a driver's license, they're not able to work because you know their job in involves driving. And so that is one uh, service that took off uh, overnight within a few days. Um, thousands of applications were submitted and thousands of driver's license were delivered. Uh, same, and then passports followed quickly <clears throat> after that. Again, there is the, the, the trust in the Postal Service to deliver my passport or confidential documents, uh, government credentials. So I, I understand the, the lack of funds, but I think there are definite uh, opportunities for the Postal Services to um, add more value and generate more revenue. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, one of the benefits coming out of the pandemic, I think, presents real opportunities. And maybe why we're even having discuss this discussion today uh, coming out of the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Um, Andrea, I'm going to pose this next question to you, but if you can't answer it, just tell me and I'll, I'll pass it to somebody else. But since we've heard, um, we've, we've, uh, Luke Marston's asked the question, any thoughts on SID's cooperation with larger training partners or economies? What's the value of the opportunity of the risk? Um, do you have any sort of any tips to dealing with, with uh, so from a SID's perspective, dealing with some of the larger trading partners? Well, uh... That's, if you like, uh, relates to the kind of half question that you asked me after the presentation. So what's the value of having, uh, how can we leverage uh, the expertise of biggest partners in, uh, for example, a regional program and uh, that we are trying to, uh, to come out with, with the financial support from the organization that you can represent and so on which is the PESER Plus Implementation Unit. And, uh, and so I would also like to thank you for this question, uh, for this uh, question. Now, to answer that, I mean, if you look at the results of your survey, uh, as you have seen, there is the issue of funds, uh, which obviously uh, is an issue, but as many point out, maybe, you know, in, the, in, the, in this modern world, uh, where, you know, the biggest uh, multinationals came out from a garage uh, as micro, small and medium enterprise. You think at Apple, Google, Amazon, and what you have, probably the issue of fund, or fund is no longer the, the most binding, uh, in, you know, if there are good ideas. But the, what is binding instead is definitely the human resources and know-how. And uh, because even those small companies that then become multi-billion empires, they are all made by uh, people who have a lot of ideas, a lot of experience, a lot of know-how, and a lot of good education. And, uh, you know, probably uh, I would say that uh, cooperation with uh, uh, post operators from uh, countries that, for example, have already expertise and experience in these innovative areas that we were talking about, is necessary 
if we want, uh, you know, to import some of that innovation in countries that uh, uh, have the, if you like, the ability to leapfrog, but maybe not, they don't have the human resources uh, to do so. So that, that's where I think that really the, uh, for example, like in our case, within regional programs uh, or reg uh, regional program for the post office cooperation with post office from developed countries that are our members, you know, can allow that kind of uh, uh, really mutually reinforcing uh, benefits, which can allow that leapfrogging that we were talking about. Because if I was thinking, you know, I was listening carefully to the intervention of all these uh, postal experts and, uh, and they were mentioning some possible function, actually existing functions, which in addition to the logistics, so the standard job of the post, you know, touches upon many of the, if you like, the key determinants of an enabling environment of e for e-commerce. We were talking about e-payments, which is one of the key areas, and especially e-payments for those who don't, do not have a bank account, uh, which is not just a matter of not having a credit card. At first, in order to have a credit card or a debit card, you need a bank account. And in the Pacific, that's the minority of people who want it. So unless you start to integrate mobile money solution, for example, you know, into, into the payment system, it is difficult to promote e-commerce. We're talking about incubators. That's another uh, key determinant of e-commerce readiness because that uh, after education and incubators uh, produces the skills that are necessary. And, and, the, and, and we have seen from uh, Paul and other participants, like in other countries, this, this is working. We're talking about uh, e-commerce platforms. Uh, in some, in some uh, countries, uh, postal services are served as platform to, uh, to sell and buy goods. And this is another area uh, which, you know, allows a country to become uh, e-commerce ready. And finally, e-government, uh, which, you know, it's, it's kind of, if you like, a little bit more distant from e-commerce, uh, but still is one of the, you know, of the main aspects that make a country uh, and that allow, you know, that public sector part of the eco e electronic ecosystem to, uh, to, to work. So unless we partners we partner with uh, actual operators who are able to transfer that expertise to our members in a sustainable way. And when I say in a sustainable way, it means that they're gonna stay because it is their interest. Australia and New Zealand are not gonna, uh, you know, for example, uh, go to another continent after the program is finished because they are, they are gonna stay there and they have a direct interest, you know? Uh, they, they have a direct interest for our postal, for our postal, uh, operators uh, to improve because it's also in their own interest to trade uh, to trade with the Pacific and vice versa. And so I think these are kind of examples that justify a progressive partnership between our members and the bigger trading partners. We are almost out of time. Um, feels hard to believe we've crammed so much into an hour and a half. Um, there are, I'm sorry to everybody who's asked questions, um, but I'll just quickly share a couple of things that have come up in the chat um, before I go around and ask our panellists for a final 30-second comment. Um, Lindsay Welsh from New Zealand uh, mentioned that EAD, Electronic Advanced Data, or AED, for some others, for some reason, um, is powerful and, uh, as, as Paul and Andrea pointed out, an important consideration is also data security. So data sharing agreements are key to protect sending and receiving posts and the sending and receiving customers too. Thank you, Lindsay, for your comments. Um, various comments from Sid Hart at the APP. Sorry, Sid, I didn't get time to ask all of your questions. And ditto Richard Wishart. I'm sorry, I didn't get to, uh, time to ask your questions. Everybody else, I'm now going to go around our panellists and ask for a very quick um, final comment, anything that you think we've missed that we should have mentioned or any uh, particular nuggets or gems that you want to share with the audience. Um, Paul, I'll start with you, please. Yeah, and uh, first of all, I, I think it's been a fabulous discussion. I'm really excited by the, the broad range of topics that we've covered. Uh, and for me, it really validates um, uh, the approach and direction that we're taking at the UPU about strengthening our focus on SIDS. Uh, there's obviously a lot of uh, demand here for, for development uh, and there's a lot of opportunities as we've covered. So the UPU is strengthening its uh, focus on SIDS uh, within our regional development plans. 
Um, we are excited by partnerships, both with um, organizations like PIFS, but also with the private sector about how we can accelerate the digital transformation for SIDS uh, and make access to um, uh, solutions, but also as uh, 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 Franklin mentioned to make sure that policymakers are informed about the opportunities that exist um, and uh, and how posts can help SIDS develop uh, more rapidly. Um, and then finally, uh, picking up on this data privacy and, and security issue, then I just want to reinforce the message that um, the UPU with, uh, with our cyber security program, um, we're really looking at trying to strengthen the cyber protection of um, SIDS, uh, where lack of uh, access to skills and knowledge is a critical issue. And cyber attacks can really also have a significant impact. So our, our DOT post uh, program at the UPU, which has been mentioned by a number of people today, uh, I would really encourage all SIDS to look at um, as, a, as a tool to help protect uh, their digital infrastructure as they go on this digital transformation journey. Rodney Taylor, uh, would you like to share any final comments, please? Sure. Uh, again, Paul did a wonderful summary as he did a wonderful introduction. So all I'll say is uh, we, we started our last um, um, podcast, Ian, by talking about cricket off camera and how, you know, from as small states, we, we dominated the game you know, back in the early days. But um, we didn't invent it, but we mastered it. And same, I think we need not to be daunted. Are we talking about Tasmania or the West Indies here? Or we're talking about the West Indies here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, in the same way, we need not be daunted by the issue of digital transformation. Certainly there's an opportunity for us as well to collaborate with our, our brothers and sisters and smaller, other small island developing states uh, in fact, we do have a, a, an internet governance forum promoting cooperation between small island developing states as well. You can look up for that. Thanks for that um, opportunity to say that. But um, thanks for a very interesting discussion. And uh, I know from firsthand that there's some real opportunities for postal services and SIDS to help drive digital transformation within our economies. Thank you. Franklin, your final comments, please. Uh, thank you, Jan. Um, thank you for having me. And uh, indeed, uh, I will echo Rodney and Paul's uh, comments on, on the conference. Um, my final comment would be, I don't know how, but uh, I plead that we engage governments in this process, that they rather be, be protective and invest in subsidizing the growing outdated post model to invest in the creation of collaboration between postal organization in the region. So, and I hope that the postal organization from the SITS can find a way to collaborate each, with each other in developing and uh, make use of uh, the digital transformation to help each other move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Franklin. And Sarai, some final words for you before, you, before your head hits the pillow. Thank you for the opportunity, Ian, and thank you all for this uh, marvelous um, conversation. Uh, my final words are to ensure the necessary ICT infrastructure is in place, um, boost the education because uh, the capital is our people, it's a human, it's human that use this technology, and then we will improve the business environment modernize the policy and regularity framework. And I also agree more collaborations between the government and the private sector to push this um, digital economy um, to go through. So for SITS from the Samoa perspective, we need more support on meaningful connectivity, affordability and digital literacy skills to push this um, new initiative, digital transformation for postal platforms to go further. Thank you. Thank you. And Andrea, final words from you, please. Oh, thank you for the opportunity to participate and really to learn, uh, to learn much more than I knew when I, when I entered this meeting about uh, the, the real potential of, uh, you know, postal operators uh, and postal services uh, for the development of the digital economy, even beyond the, the realm of goods. Uh, I think services for the Pacific, for example, is a great, uh, probably is a greater opportunity than goods themselves. And, 
you know, just uh, I'll just close you to, to, by giving you a, a stat about business processing outsourcing in Fiji. In three years' time, the forecast is that uh, uh, that sector, which is seem really tiny, nobody talk about that. It will um, it will produce three percent of GDP and will employ twelve thousand people, which is which will make business process outsourcing in Fiji bigger than the fishing industry. Which is something we talk a lot about, you know, fisheries in the Pacific. So just just to think about what digital transformation means, uh, you know, I think that's a good example. And uh, I really, really much welcome, you know, any contribution that the postal system and postal operator can give to this uh, digital transformation of Pacific economy, including through uh, the cooperation that we are framing within uh, the umbrella of the cooperation with the UPU and the uh, their postal operators. So thank you very much for, for this opportunity. Well, thank you to all our fabulous panelists for your inputs today, for your expertise. It's been really illuminating. Thank you to Katja at the UPU for all your work behind the scenes. Thank you also to the IT team for making sure that the stream went out to the world and that we fixed any bumps in the road along the way. There will be a video replay available of this uh, at some point uh, probably on YouTube. Check the UPU website for more details, not just about what we've just been participating in, but also the UPU voicemail podcast, the dot post initiative that Paul may have mentioned once or twice, and various other things. Head on over to the UPU website, upu.int. There's a link in the chat right now to um, the UPU website. So thank you for taking part. Thank you for your input, your questions, and enjoy the rest of your day. Or if you're in the Pacific, and we know there's more than one, <laughs> have a good night's sleep. All right. Goodbye, everybody.